بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين <coughs> This following on from yesterday, yesterday we briefly started regarding fasting and how it's necessary for everybody to especially we touched on the issue of making an intention so it's necessary for everybody to make an intention when they're fasting and also to differentiate their fast from any other kind of action also one thing we didn't mention was overall what fasting actually entails what is fasting so throughout the year whenever somebody fasts it falls into the very simple definition which most of us are aware of is that from the time of dawn which is when the first rays of the sun start to become visible a person he stays away from food drink and any kind of sexual interaction all the way until the time when the sun sets so these are the th this is a very basic definition which we should have in our mind we already most of us we more than aware of that so this kind of fasting it becomes obligatory and necessary on many people so in ramadan it becomes far on certain people so if a person is a muslim and he is bali he has reached the age of maturity and also he's sane so he's not insane he's he knows what he's doing he knows how to uh, he, all of the injunctions of sharia are obligatory on him so this kind of person he will be required to fast in the month of ramadan and the very simple definition which he has to follow is that he stays away from these three things now each of these three things have quite deep connotations so for example a person staying away from sexual intercourse these everything that comes under this heading it can be quite developed so a person can stay away from a different uh, variety of things here which are covered by this kind of thing also eating a person has to stay away from food and making sure that nothing goes down his throat this covers many uh, a different variety of things and drinking also covers a different variety of things as well so this is something we'll cover tomorrow inshallah however when somebody is fasting then the fasting becomes necessary on certain people but certain people who may be sane they may be muslim and they may also be bali but they do not have to fast so certain people are exempt from the overall fard of fasting in ramadan so the most common example which may apply to all of us at some point is when a person becomes a shar'i musafir he becomes a musafir in the eyes of islam so he travels a distance we, uh, of what we say about 50 miles when a person travels beyond 50 miles uh, from his hometown then this person he becomes a musafir fasting is no longer fard on this person another person is obviously a person who is ill and sick Islam gives a lot of priority to somebody's good health and well-being if a person because of fasting becomes more ill or becomes more sick or is likely to develop an illness because of staying away from food or drink or staying away from certain medication then this person he is not allowed to fast this is something Islam because of the priority and preference and importance Islam gives to somebody's health then if a person was to fall ill and then even if he wants to fast he's told not to fast because it will damage his health so a person whose health is damaged by fasting is told by sharia not to fast also other exceptions which is widely known is a pregnant woman a woman who um, has just given birth or is about to give birth is you know in that kind of time where she feels the strain of carrying of carrying the fetus so when a woman starts to feel the strain and feels weak because of this and needs to nourish herself regularly throughout the day because of this this woman will also be exempt because uh, primarily it may harm herself and also it's very possible it will harm the child if a woman does not eat properly so a pregnant woman is also exempt from these kind of things also there's one is to be ill and there's another to be diagnosed with such a condition that for the rest of your life you will be weak or ill when a person gets to a certain age sometimes it's impossible for him to fast during especially the summer months which we are currently in so it's possible that a person he will not be able to fast in the summer of Ramadan you know for the next 10 10 years or so we're gonna have quite long 15 15 hour plus fasts so certain people they can't fast that long so these people are also exempt from uh, the fun of the fasting in that time also like we mentioned that a person who's insane he doesn't have to fast and a person who's unconscious he also will not have to fast these are slightly more obvious so now what we mentioned is that a lot of 
exceptions have now been made. So if a person's traveling, if a person's perfectly healthy and traveling, he doesn't have to fast. But most likely in this country, this is a ruling which applied specifically or more, more pertinently and more relevantly to the past. So in uh, Arabian culture, if you wanted to travel, you'd be taking literally just your camel with all your provisions on the camel and you'd be traveling for three days. Now when a person does that, it's very difficult to fast, especially when it's hot. In fact, there's a narration where the Prophet وسلم, he was traveling and he was the only person fasting. Abu Darda radiallahu an and the Prophet وسلم, from all of the Sahaba in that uh, particular journey, they were the only people fasting. That's how hot it was. It was very difficult. Even the Sahaba did not fast because of that, uh, because of the journey at that time. So we see that it's when a person travels, but in this country we have to also you know, we have to make it a bit more relevant. If we're traveling from here to Manchester, it's way more than 50 miles. But if we're going in our car, in our Virgin trains, you know, with you know, with the luxury that we have, then for a person just to be sitting there drinking coffee for no reason, is, it's not really, you know, there's not really much need for that. So Alhamdulillah, in this, even if we were to travel to Pakistan or Bangladesh or back to Mauritius or wherever we're from, even if we were to go back there on a, on a plane, even though in Arabian uh, calculations, that's a month's journey. But nowadays, we wouldn't feel the need. Many of us would probably still fast. So this is something which, alhamdulillah, is easy. Even if we're on the plane and we're on a Muslim airline, they'll tell us the time for, fast, for iftar and all these kind of things. They'll even provide iftar. So this is something to keep in mind, that just because we're traveling from here, even if you go to London, it's 60 miles in some places. Ilford is about 50 miles. You go into central London, it's, you become a Musafir. It doesn't mean that you know, if we go there, we have to break our fast, or we should break our fast. This is very different to Salah. In the Hanafi Mother, when we're praying, because Allah gives us this ruqsa of praying two instead of four. So when we're praying our dhuhr, asr or isha, and we're traveling, we will pray two instead. This is something we'll definitely do. And anything extra will be nafal. However, in fasting, this is not the same. If a person can fast, he should keep the fasting. The reasons for this is because of the virtue of Ramadan, the blessing of Ramadan. Now, certain hadith say if a person misses one fast of Ramadan, he cannot make it up. In, 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 even if he was to fast for his whole life or for one whole year continuously. So we, it's very difficult to make up the fast of Ramadan. That's why we try and keep it going. So this is to do with the traveler and depending if we have a little headache. Now it's important that we consult a mufti or a local scholar on what it means to be ill. And you know how do we go around this? Does that mean we break our fast? Obviously it's important that we understand the criteria. The criteria is if by not eating and drinking that illness will get worse or it will be prolonged then a person breaks his fast if a person has a migraine on the first day of fasting on thursday we were all probably feeling migraines and finding it a little bit hard but we you know we make do so we have to you know find that balance we don't just make everything as an excuse for being ill as well so the different we were trying to differentiate between a person who breaks his fast for a legitimate reason and he can't fast on that day. So now this person, he will make it up after Ramadan. However, this different, there's two types of people. One is that type of people, that type of person, who can make it up after Ramadan. And there's another type of person who can't make it up after Ramadan. In fact, there's three types. One is a person who can fast, but he's ill. One is another person who can fast, but he's uh, got such a disease that he can't fast 15 hours plus. So he can only fast the shorter fasts, 10 hours in, in the winter. And there's another person who altogether just cannot fast. So there's three groups. Now all three have different rulings. If a person is traveling or he's ill, he's got, a, you know, he's got an operation in Ramadan, then this person, he will have to make it up as soon as Ramadan finishes. This, it will become farad on him. So if he misses that and dies, it will be quite bad. The second person who's ill, and he can only fast for 10 hours or 12 hours, then obviously as soon as the winter hits in, as soon as October, November starts, he would be required to immediately make up these fasts. And the third person is a person who cannot leave, live without medication every four or five hours. So this kind of person, he will not be able to fast at all. We're not going to make up a new fast for this person, unfortunately. So this person, he will have to give fidya. Now fidya is something very important. Again, the amount of fidya, 
the person who's going to give fidya has to consult his local scholar again. And I'm not going to say a specific amount here, but generally some say this uh, in Colchester Mosque we've on the timetable we put the Sadaqatul Fitr as five pound, I think. Which is a generous amount. You know, some say less, some say two pound or one fifty even. But because Alhamdulillah it's quite an affluent part of the country and most people can afford five pound per head. Even if you have a big family of ten kids and a wife, it's still sixty pound or something. So it's not too much. It's not too much to ask. So because Sadaqat al-Fitr is one time, everyone takes it seriously that we have to give this. We'll come to the fiqh of that later. But the same amount is usually given to the fidya as well. So a person, if he misses one fast, he should give that amount on a daily basis for every fast that a person misses. And this is some person who will then make, uh, so if you can't make up the fast, a person will have to give fidya. And now moving on to the average person now who Remember, we gave the definition of fasting, staying away from the three things. So now, there's different ways of breaking a fast. One is, and also there's two compensations for making a fast. So the two compensations are qadha and kafara. So a qadha is just to make up one fast. So if I was to not fast today, then I would have to make up another fast. If I was musafir, I'd have to do qadha of that. If you fall under one of these categories, you legitimately don't have to fast. If you're ill or you're traveling, then you'll have to make that up, one fast. However, there's certain scenarios when a person, he doesn't just have to make up one fast. So if a person delegitimately, he illegally breaks his fast, then this person, he will have to give kafara as well. So these are the two things. A kafara is that this person, he will then have to fast continuously for 60 days. Not continuously as in without iftar, but for 60 days in a row, he will have to fast to make up a, a broken fast. However, the application of a kafara is very rare. And it's based on a conscious decision for a person to started fasting at Fajr time to now not fast. It has to be a conscious decision. And also based on desire. There's a lot of conditions which have to be met for a person to have to give kafara. So if on an average jahil kind of, uh, if we consider some, maybe some of our friends or relatives who aren't very practicing Muslims, so they don't fast. Now this person, he will not have to give kafara. Because he never broke his fast. So the condition of kafara is a person, he fasts in the morning and then throughout uh, some point in the day he breaks his fast. So this is when kafara applies. If a person doesn't break his fast and he never fasts from the morning, he never makes intention, then this will require qadha. This is obviously very bad and it's haram and it's, you know, it's very, very even that a person tries to not fast you know, in Ramadan despite knowing and alhamdulillah most of us here we have some enough connection with Islam to know how bad that is but if a person was to do that it would not be kafara kafara would only apply if a person was to make intention and then break the fast now you have to break the fast in a certain way you have to, for kafara to apply you have to break it with a food item or a drink item or obviously some kind of intercourse. Now, these uh, we won't go too much into the third option, but the first two options we'll discuss in a bit more detail. Um, if the third option you have questions, you can ask those afterwards. So the first two options, food and drink. Food has to be, you have to feel a desire towards the food, and the food has to be, in, for example, if a person eats uh, uh, half a kilo of salt, it will not give kafara. Because we don't consider eating half a kilo of salt as food. And it's not something you desire towards. So desire towards the food, something which you think that you want to eat. And then you break your fast using that. And also it has to be something which is some form of nutrition as well. So these, uh, these conditions. And consciously a person has to be fully aware that he's fasting. And aware that, break, that eating this will break his fast. So when a person fulfills these conditions, then kafara will apply. So generally, as we can see, kafara doesn't apply to the average person. Obviously, if you forgetfully eat or if you mistakenly eat or you eat without knowing. And if a person eats and then forgetfully and then he thinks that his fast is broken, then he carries on eating. If it's done due to jahala, then there's no kafara. Kafara is a conscious decision, educated decision when a person breaks his fast. So these are the two things. And obviously, when kafara doesn't apply, what we'll find is that there's lots of scenarios and the fiqh books, especially in Hanafi fiqh, mashallah, we cover every hypothetical scenario possible. Like eating salt, you'll find in the fiqh books. If a person eats salt, if a person chews the rubber on his pencil, if a person bites his fingernail, if a person uh, has a flavored miswak and he swallows the, sw swallows the flavor, if a person is brushing his teeth. Brushing his teeth is a question everyone asks, so we'll cover that. Um, if a person brushes their teeth while they're fasting, then, I mean, it's just like doing a miswak. 
However, it's very, very important that we're extremely careful. It's, if you can avoid it and brush your teeth before Saturday time ends, perfect. If some of us going to work and we sleep, you know, at four o'clock and then wake up at nine o'clock and then we want to brush our teeth, then a person can brush the teeth, but it's very important. That you can't just, we can't say it's haram or not allowed to brush your teeth, but you have to say, it's, you have to be extremely cautious. Because brushing your teeth, generally the, the toothpaste is going everywhere and very likely to go down the throat. So you have to be very, very cautious. You have to be extremely careful about this. So if a person wants to brush their teeth, nobody's going to say it's haram or not allowed. But you have to be very, very careful when you do it. And the fatwa is simple, that you're allowed to brush your teeth, but if anything goes down your throat, your fast is broken. And you have to do qadha, which is terrible. I mean, to break a fast for that kind of reason. So extreme care has to be taken. Uh, while brushing the teeth. And this is one of the things which would obviously result in qadha. Any mistake which happens also results in qadha. For example, if a person is eating and you know the transmitter here we have and the muaddin gets very excited and gives the adhan two minutes early for maghrib. And then everyone listening at home, everybody breaks their fast. So now this would be a mistake. Unfortunately, your fast will not count because it's a mistake. You've broken the fast before sunset. So there will have to be qadha. So because of a mistake, it will be qadha. Any kind of uh, discrepancy like this, uh, when a person, he does something which doesn't fulfill the requirements of kafara, then qadha will apply. And there's a whole long list of these kind of things with many different examples that we can give. And these are kind of things from all three. So if a person can eat, drink, and also have intercourse, then these kind of things, if a person does these kind of things, and he um, doesn't do it with the, uh, deliberately, he doesn't do it with the intention of you know, fulfilling himself, and also he doesn't you know, want to break his fast, then th these kind of things, uh, they will not result in kafara. They will only uh, result in a person having to do qadha of one day after Ramadan. So this is just a brief of the, th the people that have to fast, which is everyone basically, unless you're ill or a musafir. If you can't fast, how you make up those fasts? And if you are fasting and you do certain things, does that mean that you have to do kafara or qadha? So sometimes you'll have to do kafara, which is a very big thing, which is 60 days continuous fasting. Also, if a person cannot fast, and the 60 days continuous due to another illness, then this person, there's a second option, which is fidya, and also um, g g giving sadaqah for, uh, uh, to 60 people, or giving sadaqah to one person for 60 days continuously. So these are different options which a person has. But kafara, the default position of kafara is to fast 60 days continuously. So again, uh, especially regarding the fidya, this is something we have to ask our local scholars because the price goes up and down. And also, essentially, it depends on the person who's giving and his affluence and his money. If he's a very rich person, then his fidya, you know, the mufti will give him a higher, a higher verdict. And if it's somebody who doesn't have much money, then he'll give him the lower ruling. And there'll be an advisory amount as well. So this is something we should try and keep in mind. So that's the you know, essence of today, inshallah. And tomorrow, inshallah, we'll move on to the things which break the fast. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me and all of us the ability to understand and act upon what has been said. <laughs> Just here. Just here. What about the other place? Uh, we don't do it. No, 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 stop? no, nobody does it there. Oh, okay. But why stop? Any idea? Because before you guys were doing um, Because we didn't used to do it here. Okay. So yeah. it's either one of the two places. So we've chosen to do it here. Okay. Uh, Only month of Ramadan or even uh, after Ramadan? I think until the building work fully starts, we're going to try and keep it here. Which building? Uh, so we're going to knock this wall down. We, we are making a date. Yeah, so when this wall starts getting knocked down, I think we're going to move back there. Um, so there's 115, there's a second one at 150 as well. So there's okay, two. So 115 and 150. Yeah. So what time the khutbah start? The English one? Yeah. The English will be 12.50. Okay, so if I want to uh, attend this 115, so I should be here at 12.50. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do, you know, do, you not, do you not like it? I like this. Oh, so why do you switch off? I don't know. Oh, no, it's okay, sir. Because everyone's going now. It's okay.